talk some more about the foolishness of easy believism because I'm learning that that's what it really is. When somebody denies that repentance means to turn from your sins, <clears throat> then then what they are doing is they're teaching easy believism. And the the other side to that is lordship salvation, which I would say is biblical salvation. So if you want so you can count me in on the lordship salvation camp. Um because the Bible does say that whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I mean, the Bible teaches that whenever somebody is saved in the Bible, they always recognize Jesus as Lord. Uh, <laughs> so these easy believers in people, they try to divorce things. They try to divorce the true definition of repentance from the word repentance, or they try to divorce repentance from the gospel. Um... And they try to divorce Jesus the Savior from the Lord Jesus. Okay, you can't do that. They're the same. You know, um, when a person gets saved, they get the Lord Jesus and the Savior Jesus. Um, so, I just want to give an example of easy believes, believism evangelism. Um, let's see... So let's say there's like a hardcore wine bibber or something, you know, an alcoholic, and an easy believism person comes to him and says, Sir, uh, do you know if you died today that you would go to heaven? And he says, you know, well, I don't rightly know. And so the easy believism person says, well, Jesus was the Son of God and he died on the cross for your sins. And then the wine bibber is like, well, that's good and all, but I don't want to give up my drinking. So, um... The easy believism person is like, oh, oh, you don't, you don't got to give up your drinking, you don't got to turn from your sin. All you got to do is believe on Jesus, and then you'll be saved. <laughs> so, you know, so then uh, the wine river's like, oh, that's all I got to do. All I got to do is believe. I don't got to give up my drinking. No. And uh, so he's like, okay, I can do that. I guess I'm going to heaven then. And you know, I might uh, celebrate that tonight, and I'll just get a couple of hookers too. <laughs> no. I mean, that's foolishness. Is that biblical salvation? Are you kidding me? No, that's not biblical salvation. You know, biblical salvation would be saying, you know, um, you know, the Bible says that drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, uh, and drunkenness is a sin, and God hates it. And you need to repent of that sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation. Okay, and then that wine bibber's heart gets pricked and convicted by the Holy Spirit and then he puts down the alcohol and he says this you're right I am a sinner this is sin you know I need to be saved God please forgive me uh, I turn from my alcoholism I don't want to drink again please save me God okay that's biblical salvation and then the person really gets saved and uh, and you know salvation happens by the Holy Ghost you know we cannot manipulate it and I've seen that. I've seen the fruits of easy believers, and a lot of times it's, I mean, it's just manipulation. I mean, it's lies, is what it is. And um, it's people just saying a prayer with somebody, or telling them just to believe, and it's leading them into false conversion. That's why we have a lot of false conversions today. That's why, you know, we have a lot of tears among the wheat. No, it's the enemy sowing seeds there. <laughs> or, you know, sowing tears. Uh... So, I was going to say some other things. Uh, i got to think what I was going to say. I'm still studying a lot um, about this subject. And, you know, I've, I've, I've read, you know, repentance without faith in God is nothing more than remorse or regret. It's just pretty much like what Judas had. You know, he repented, but he never put his faith in God for his salvation. So really, it was just regret or whatever. Then he committed suicide. And, you know, faith without repentance is making Jesus nothing more than a fire escape. Okay, and that's, that's not what it's about. So they, need to, they go hand in hand together. They both need to be there. They both need to be preached. Jesus said to preach repentance and remission of sins. Okay. Um, 
Man, I really need to try to remember what I was going to say. should have wrote this down. I was going to make another point that I thought was pretty good. Okay, yeah. So, about like turning from all sins. So, people say, you know, it's impossible to turn from all your sins or, you know, they think that's ridiculous. Well, that's kind of like someone asking... Um, First of all, I mean, we need to realize that turning is a change of direction. Turn, okay? It doesn't mean to never sin again, that that if you sin again, then you're not saved. No. It means you're headed down one path, you know, of sin. You're living in sin. You're sinning all the time. You love your sin. You, you don't recognize it as sin. And then, you know, God opens your understanding and everything, and, you know, He gives you the, the opportunity to repent, to turn away from that, to turn to Him. And then you turn, and now you're headed down the path of righteousness, you know, you're looking towards God. Um, and I, I've, um, I've read, you know, the negative uh, side of repentance is turning from sin. The positive side is turning to God. And like the Ten Commandments, uh, it's a lot of negatives. Like, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Um, you know, like the positives would be, you know live holy, you know, live like the Lord, or whatever, and the negatives are like, don't do this, don't do this, so, uh, but it does mean to turn, turn from sin, and it is necessary for salvation, and, uh, but to turn from all sins, I mean, that's like someone saying, uh, do I have to turn from my drunkenness and my fornication? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do, okay, and my hatred and my envy too, yeah, yeah, and my greed and my lust? Yeah, all of it. You see, does God hate all sin? Yeah, he hates all sin. You must turn from all your sin, okay? Um, you know, at conversion, you know, it's just whatever God reveals to that person. Whatever whatever you know, you turn from, okay? And it doesn't mean that that you won't you won't sin again. Okay? <laughs> That's not what it means at all. It means a change of direction. Okay? You recognize what sin is now. You recognize, uh, you know, the cost of it, the penalty, you know, all the, the consequences that God hates it and everything. And then you yourself hate it now. And it saddens you and you want to turn away from it. So you forsake it, okay? Um, so here's a couple other verses. You know, Ezekiel 18.4 Behold, all souls are mine as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Okay? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Confess and forsake shall have mercy. I mean, God hates sin. The easy believers in people, they don't really have a right view of God. They don't have a right view of sin. They don't have a right salvation, okay? And I really kind of have to doubt their salvation because they don't have this understanding. And I think that it's possible that some of them might be saved and they're repentant of their sins and for some reason they're just deceived and blinded. They don't see that, but it's really dangerous. And, uh... As far as ex-Catholics things, and all of them, I mean, they're inconsistent, and it's hard for me to even really understand what the ex-Catholics teach, because it says it's a change of mind, a change of heart, but it's not ch turning from sin, it's not turning from sin. Um, so therefore, like I said at the beginning, that's how they would have to evangelize. You know, if someone asks, do I have to give up drinking to be saved, they would have to say no if they, don't, if they believe that you don't turn from sin to get saved. So, uh, but then he also said something like, all it is is acknowledging God, or something like that. So, and he should know better than that, because the Mormons and the Catholics, which they preach against, they acknowledge God. I mean, it's not simply just acknowledging God and understanding some facts, okay? It's accepting, you know, it's believing in the Lord Jesus, the Lord, and making him Lord, okay? 
I mean, he already is Lord, but it's submitting to his Lordship, okay? And repenting of your sins. It is turning from your sins. And they'll say, well, you don't have to repent of your sins to be saved because that's work salvation. But after you're saved, you do have to repent of your sins. Well, that's just inconsistent. And that doesn't make any sense at all. And it's not what the Bible teaches. You know, if you don't have to turn from your sins to be saved, then you don't have to turn from your sins at all. And that's just folly. So the Bible clearly states that, yes, you do have to turn from your sin. You know, it's like a guy's just like, you know, it says the Thessalonians, they turned from idols to serve the living God. So it's like a person is just bear-hugging an idol. Okay, they're, they're bear-hugging their idols, and someone's like, all you got to do is believe my God. They're like, you know, I'm not giving this up. I'm holding on to this idol. And they're like, okay, yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, thanks for salvation, God. Oh, I love my idol. You know, I'm not letting go. I mean, come on, that person's not going to get saved. Okay? They have to forsake that, you know? Jesus told that guy, the rich guy, to sell all he had, give it to the poor, and follow him. You know, these easy believers and people, they're saying that there's no evidence of salvation. A person can be saved, and they can just continue to live in sin for the rest of their life, or whatever, and... And they can be saved. So, I mean, how can they even judge anything and say that that Mormons or, or Catholics or whatever aren't saved? Because really what they believe is as long as you made a profession of faith at one point, or as long as you believed at one point, then you're saved. Because, you know, you have eternal security, which I agree with. But... They don't think that, that, they don't believe in like sanctification, that the Holy Spirit's going to, you know, push the person and the person's going to work together with it. You know, I do understand that people sin after they're saved and they can even, you know, get stuck in a rut and, and sin, stay in sin for a while. But it's not the same. And that person's going to repent. They're either going to repent or they're going to be chastised. So, you know, until they repent or until just God just takes them away. But there's just so much foolishness about this easy believism. It's a false gospel. It really is. And it's sad to see that there's so many that are deceived about it. They're being told that it's work salvation to tell people to turn from their sin. And that's biblical salvation. And, you know, they're going to have to answer for this someday. And it's not going to be a good thing. I've seen the fruit of it. I've seen people make professions of faith and pray prayers and not have a changed life and not be saved. And people ask, you know, well, how do you know if you've turned from all your sins? If you could doubt your salvation or something. You know, well, the Bible says you need to turn from your sins. This is biblical salvation. So how does a person know that they're saved? Well, you, you examine yourself by Scripture. And, uh, you know, was there a definite point in your life where things change? Do you love God's Word? Do you love prayer? You know, there's a long list of things that you could check. But a person knows if they've turned from their sin. I mean person who is a drunkard knows if they've turned from that, if they're still drinking or not. I mean, if you know what your sin is, then you know if you've turned from it. It's not really that hard, you know. But I understand it's confusing with all the false teachings out there and stuff. And so, I hope uh, this made you think some more. Um, and no, those who are, who are hardcore stuck in their easy believism, they're not going to repent. And I pray that they will, but this is really for those who are just kind of in the middle. Give you some things to think about. So thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.